for prison beds, adding to the fiscal deficit and betting on which direction the social deficit is heading. New Zealand is one of the most unequal countries in the OECD, and that inequality drives crime, illness, violence, poor educational outcomes and so much more. The cost of prisons, courts and police in this budget alone has increased to $3.7 billion from $1.7 billion just 10 years ago. Inequality costs everyone. Because some New Zealand families can't afford to heat their drafty homes, it costs taxpayers $54 million each year to treat respiratory illness. It costs business 180,000 sick days and it costs $400 million in electricity that we didn't need to use, doing untold unnecessary environmental harm along the way. There are many more examples about how inequality hurts everybody. Earlier this week, my colleague Materia Ture launched a plan to reduce inequality and to help make New Zealand a place where everyone gets a fair go, a plan called Mind the Gap. It includes a tax-free threshold of $10,000 which would benefit everyone, but would give the most help to those New Zealanders who need it the most, the low-income earners. Mind the Gap also suggests giving every family a reasonable amount of electricity at a fixed low rate so that they can stay warm and healthy. Under a progressive pricing plan, additional power would be charged at a higher rate, so it still pays to save power. Again, this measure helps all of us, but it has the biggest positive impact on our poorest families. These are just two of eight practical and fiscally responsible steps described in Mind the Gap. It is measures such as these that can address the social deficit that this government inherited. Instead, John Key chooses to concentrate on tax cuts that help the, the most wealthy ahead of the most needy. John Key's government chooses to dishonour the Treaty of Waitangi by ensuring that Māori remain in poverty. The eight-point plan in our Mind the Gap package is part of what we have called a Green New Deal for New Zealand. It sits alongside two economic stimulus packages that the Green Party released last year, packages that offer practical solutions to our economic, environmental and climate crises. Green New Deal solutions tackle all these pressing problems at the same time. Green New Deal solutions account for the fact that these challenges are global in nature. Green New, Green New Deal solutions see opportunity and lay out a practical path to prosperity. The most high profile of our Green New Deal solutions is the $323 million home insulation program that has already made 40,000 New Zealand homes warmer and healthier. It is evidence that we offer practical answers to New Zealand's problems. Indeed, we have a surplus of solutions to offer a government in deficit. As well as a vision deficit, a fiscal deficit and a social deficit, the budget deepens our environmental deficit. We are currently clearing native vegetation at the fastest rate since European colonisation, an extraordinary fact. We are in the middle of a biodiversity crisis in this country, a crisis caused by us. The key reason for this loss of native vegetation is agricultural intensification, according to Landcare research. We know that a key driver of agricultural intensification is the rapid increase in rural land values. Rural developers are seeking the tax-free capital gains that come with dairy conversions and dairy corporations are pushing land harder in order to make the interest payments on the big loans. A capital gains tax would put downward pressure on rural land prices and take some of the pressure off our land and off our biodiversity. Agricultural intensification is also driving the desperate decline in water quality across our country. Drinking water for rural towns like Dunsandal is polluted by dairy corporations. Rivers are being dammed and drained for irrigation, the water replaced by runoff thick with faeces and fertiliser. 
We have health warnings now. We have health warnings that newborns are at risk of nitrate pollution. The government members think it's funny that our infants are at risk of nitrate pollution because of the water is now so polluted by nitrate by dairy corporations. Well, the Green Party doesn't think it's funny, and the government might think it's funny that they're polluting our waterways to such an extent that it's dangerous for our children and our infants to drink that water. The Green Party doesn't think it's funny. We think we should do something about it. The government doesn't care. The government is giving funds to irrigation companies in order to expand irrigation in New Zealand so that we can pollute our groundwater even further. Well, the Green Party doesn't think that funny. The Green Party thinks that's wrong. This budget does nothing to address New Zealand's environmental deficit. There is no capital gains tax. There is no charge for using the public's water for private profit, and there is no charge for pollution. In fact, the government grants for irrigation schemes subsidise the destruction of our rivers and aquifers. How about that? We are now passing a budget where taxpayers' money will be used to subsidise the destruction of rivers and aquifers. This is environmentally tragic, and it is economically stupid. Likewise, the government's plan to subsidise greenhouse pollution to the tune of $100 billion over the next 40 years, according to Treasury estimates, is also environmentally tragic and economically stupid. The Greens have shown how we can make a 30 per cent reduction in our greenhouse emissions, put our economy on a competitive footing to trade in a global economy where carbon matters, and to do our bit to secure a safe future for our children. Instead, John Key's government has locked New Zealanders into subsidising our biggest polluters. The more they pollute, the more we pay. We teach our children that if they make a mess, they should clean it up. But John Key's lesson to industrial polluters is that there is no accountability for them. Their mess is our problem. They have little incentive to cut emissions through smarter technology. And National will keep hidden how much taxpayer money subsidises each individual polluting company. National will publish the welfare details of a couple of DPB mums who upset Paula Bennett, but they will not publish the details of billions in corporate welfare handed out to greenhouse polluters. John Key's government will no doubt also remain silent about the 27 per cent cut to environmental research in this budget. The Green Party will not vote for this budget but we respect the Finance Minister and acknowledge his hard work. As a Minister who takes his responsibilities very seriously, he no doubt argued for a capital gains tax. We extend our sympathies that he lost out to his Cabinet's more conservative instincts. The result is a budget that takes our country in the wrong direction. It adds to the nation's fiscal, environmental and social deficit and has a terrible deficit of vision at its heart. It adds to the fiscal deficit and takes away the sovereignty of future generations by borrowing to pay for tax cuts that heavily favour the wealthy, borrowing for Stephen Joyce's pet hol holiday highway projects and borrowing to subsidise polluters. It adds to the social deficit by entrenching inequality and locking our society into a further cycle of poverty, crime, illness. It adds to the environmental deficit and takes away the chance to enjoy the wilderness of Aotearoa New Zealand. The Green Party will not vote for this deficit budget. The